Meet Scott. Scott just came back from the doctor's office and was diagnosed with kidney disease. Where did this diagnosis come from? And what does this actually mean for Scott moving forward? Scott's physician did their best to explain the basics, but where can he turn to answer these other questions? Water. Everyone drinks it, and beyond keeping us refreshed, it plays an important part in maintaining health within a number of systems of the human body. When you have to go to the bathroom, and even long before, your renal system kicks into action. This renal system functions to excrete waste, release hormones, maintain electrolyte balance, as well as it regulates your blood pressure. And while all of these functions are coordinated by many organs, your kidneys play a key role in coordinating all of these effects. But what exactly do your kidneys do, and how do they work? Well, the human body has two bean-shaped kidneys, each of which are about the size of your fist and are located near the middle of your back, right below your ribcage. The basic function of the kidney is to act as a filter for your blood, allowing your body to retain essential components while removing toxic substances as waste. This filtrate from your blood can then be shuttled to the urinary system, while ensuring essential nutrients, vitamins, and cells can stay within the bloodstream. This is an essential filtration process, avoiding the accumulation of waste that can lead to cell damage while allowing nutrients to be delivered to the cells throughout your body. So what exactly is kidney failure? Well, as you might expect, it simply means that the kidneys gradually lose function, preventing them from filtering blood and leading to an accumulation of excess fluid and harmful waste in the body. Since the blood filtered through your kidney functions to supply the whole body with the nutrients and components they need to operate, kidney failure can manifest as many different types of symptoms. These common symptoms include being tired or having less energy, trouble sleeping, dry and itchy skin, the need to urinate more often, puffiness in the eyes, swollen ankles and feet, and poor appetite. But who's most at risk to develop kidney failure? While there are a number of non-modifiable risk factors that include a person's age, sex, and genetic factors, there exist other unique factors that individuals must be aware of when considering their own risk of developing kidney failure. Firstly, pre-existing diabetes, which is the leading cause of kidney failure, where 44% of people undergoing dialysis treatment have kidney disease resulting from diabetes. Additionally, both type 1 and type 2 diabetes are able to contribute to the development of kidney failure. Secondly, chronic high blood pressure, which is the second leading cause of kidney failure. In general, a systolic blood pressure of 140 and a diastolic blood pressure of 90, otherwise known as a blood pressure of 140 over 90, is considered high. So make sure to ask your healthcare provider about whether your blood pressure is in an appropriate range or if it puts you at risk for the development of kidney disease. Finally, a link between heart disease and kidney disease has also been found. Although one of these factors does not mean you will develop kidney disease, they each contribute to an increased risk of kidney failure, so make sure to consult your physician to assess your own risk level. But what does this mean for Scott? Common treatments involve dialysis, which simply consists of artificially filtering your blood, but late-stage kidney disease often requires kidney transplantation. Kidney transplantation is the replacement of a non-working kidney with a healthy kidney from another individual, called the donor. The healthy kidney, also known as the graft, takes over the function of the damaged kidney. But doctors must first determine whether a patient is eligible for a transplant. This is done through urine and blood tests, as well as x-rays and MRIs. And if eligible, a suitable donor can have one of their kidneys surgically removed and grafted into the patient's lower abdomen ensuring it is attached to the ureter so the grafted kidney can carry urine from the new kidney to the bladder. While this process is relatively simple, the most challenging aspect is the period following transplantation, when the patient must be monitored very closely to ensure that the grafted kidney is not rejected by the patient's own immune system. This process is made possible by the phenomenon known as compensatory growth, where the grafted kidney can be removed from a healthy donor and this donor's remaining kidney can grow larger and heavier to compensate for the missing kidney. This is a regenerative growth process that allows people to live normal lives after donating a kidney for transplantation. As this living donation process does not affect life expectancy or the risk of developing kidney failure themselves. Kidney disease can develop through a number of means, but it's important to be aware of the risk factors and the treatment options available for you. 
If you're like Scott and have any questions about your condition, make sure to do your research and follow up with your healthcare provider.